All right, Foot Clan, we had a thriller last night on Monday Night Football. We'll recap that game, all the fantasy implications, take you through the injuries, and most importantly of all, get you waiver wire picks that are going to help you win in Week 11. This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The game just ended. Just finished up Tuesday, Woo. November 12th. 2019, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. That's my name. I just figured it out. I'm Andy Holloway. I'm Andy Holloway. You can follow Mike on Twitter, Instagram, at FF Hitman. Oh, he and has I recommend you do. Especially solid shoe-related posts. You can follow Jason on oh. Instagram and Twitter, at JasonFFL. We're still waiting it's, for that big Instagram post to hit. Dude, I'm telling everybody, you don't want to miss it. It is almost live. People have been getting yeah, hot. Yeah. People getting fired. I've been so excited for it. I have followed, unfollowed, and followed you at least eight times. Yeah, that's what you're going to want to do. Make sure it stays fresh in the algorithm yeah. so that I pop up in your feed. Yeah. And then you can follow me at Andy Holloway if you want to see me drown in a sea of plants uh that's my most recent post uh, my <laughs> wife has a few too many <laughs> i choose his little vague posts and yes, plants that's Wait. all you get now you're enticed thrilling jason uh are you presently aware of how many feet in a yard oh yeah i have think you it's discovered a, this i i have learned that it is around three feet in a yard. Around, it's a very vague. It's around, measurements are always loose. That's what they somewhere say. Somewhere around three feet mm-hmm. per yard, and I believe yesterday, I, I you implied one foot per right, yard, right? Because Saquon had thirteen carries. He only got one yard. So I was like, ah, so like an inch. <laughs> it's, it's an inch of carry, except that would be a foot. Yeah. Out of curiosity, put you on the spot here. Mm. Do you remember how many feet in a mile? Five thousand two hundred and eighty. Okay, that is Good correct. Job. Yeah, that would be also you thought you'd get me there. Moronic. That's also five thousand two hundred and seventy-seven yes. <laughs> more than Saquon gained. Lots to cover today. It's a waiver uh, episode. We've got some news. We had a game last night that was a thriller. Oh boy! To the last seconds, finally of, of overtime, and uh, it was an exciting one. Unless you. Started Matt Burita or Emmanuel Sanders or maybe Tevin Coleman or even Tyler Lockett who or left you, early. Yeah, or you rostered George Kittle and hoped maybe he'd show up or anything of that nature. A lot of injuries, but goodness, a lot of amazing football. And there was still a lot of, uh, you know, good, for fantasy, you still had a lot of really good players. Chris Carson was awesome in a, in a very tough matchup. Andy, you called your shot this week. On uh, Debo Samuel, you picked him up. You played him in our league of record. You uh, on Twitter said you're calling for the breakout this week. You were you were aided a little bit with Emmanuel Sanders, but but still watching Debo and seeing oh this guy's totally legit. You you can't take him down. I want you, I want you to understand that the with Emmanuel Sanders out and getting to see what was on display for the pass catchers in San Francisco right now with no George Kittle. I'm picturing a pirate ship, and you just line them up, and you just you just kick them in the butt right off the side, mm-hmm. just one after the other. It's very easy to kick Dante Pettis. Dante off Pettis that. will not be; he might not be back next year. Drops throughout, but yeah, Debo eight for one twelve. He's a big time waiver wire pickup. If if Emmanuel Sanders was to miss, I liked him because Kittle was out, and right. I thought that Russell Wilson would be able to keep this game competitive. They use him in unique ways, and uh, man, apart from that incredible defensive play down the sideline, we thought maybe Debo would take that one to the house or get them into field goal range. DK Metcalf led the way on the Seattle side receiving-wise. I Here's one that I, I might have got it right with Debo. I got it really wrong with Jacob Hollister. Jacob Hollister had eight receptions in this game. It 
Tyler Lockett getting hurt turned Jacob Hollister into a PPR machine. Eight for 62, another touchdown. Going into the bye, he could be one of the more sneaky, benched pickups. Austin Hooper's hurt. George Kittle's hurt. Players uh, at the tight end position are limited. You could probably get Hollister because he's going into the bye for almost nothing, if not nothing, and then stash him if you want to roll the dice. I mean, we don't know how long Tyler Lockett's going to be out, but we know what Will Disley did with Russell Wilson, and Hollister is only earning trust with the system. Do you yeah. agree? No, I, I do agree. He seems like little Montana um, <laughs> in, this, in the sense that one of the things that is really helpful to be valuable for fantasy football is to have a quarterback that says, here's a touchdown. Here, here you go. Please just, just you, you're falling over. Here's a ball in your hand. Please just have one. Just hold on to it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, if that's going to, now I will say this, they're on by Tyler Lockett. He, you know, he went to the hospital with the, whatever leg swelling was causing, you know, fears of uh, blockages, but they, because they're on by, we expect them to have Ed Dixon back. We expect them to get a little bit healthier. I'm still into Jacob so, Hollister, though. I, I want – when it comes to a tight end, I just – I want a part of a good offense, and he's already got the trust of, of Russell. So I'd, I'd keep rolling with Hollister it, if I'm in that streaming territory. Yeah, it's just hard because you got to roster him through a bye week. And is, is Hollister worth that? Maybe. Yeah. I and mean, he might be. Obviously, the last two games he's been fantastic. The I, I I really appreciated the graphic that they showed where he had three touchdowns in the last two games and zero in his first twenty six or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tight end, right? I mean, every week you get one or two performances you expect, and the rest are uh, who catches the touchdown or Kyle. You know, who do you want? You want Kyle Rudolph for the rest of the season? No, he's going to average between nine and twelve yards a game. That's what Kyle Rudolph is going to average. Maybe he catches a touchdown. Or do you want – I mean, eight receptions makes a big mark for me. That being said, we searched far and wide for Emmanuel Sanders updates today. We can't find them. He's getting – he got x-rays for a rib injury, inconclusive, going to have an MRI. It would be pretty bad for this offense based on what we saw last night to lose Emmanuel Sanders. I d you know, we, we don't know for sure, but because the x-rays were inconclusive – one assumes that it's not a broken bone, and if it's more cartilage, that becomes a pain tolerance issue where he could play through that. Mike, do you have anything else from this game that you wanted to touch on? Uh, no, just that it was. I mean, it was incredibly exciting. This was, I feel like, finally an event where it, we were going nuts in our group chat. Twitter was going insane. That it was, it was the game that the NFL had been has been waiting for unfortunately it took till week 10 till we got this performance but it was it was great to finally have that event that NFL event for all of us it looked like it wasn't going to be that the way it started and then pretty much from when Sanders I mean they were 10 10 nothing looked like they were dominating the 49ers that is then Sanders goes down defensive plays on both sides it was very well, exciting and very when fun. it was when it was 21 to 10 it just looked like, well, the game is over. There's no way that Jimmy G, without Kittle, without Emmanuel Sanders, is going to be able to bring him back. And and it wasn't him. It was their defense. But it just such a wacky, and awesome, fun time. What is the opposite of clutch? Like this, this is not me baiting. Just what do you, what do you choking? Refer, yeah, I mean, is do you just I think say that the is, choke? Yeah, I think that's. What, are you talking about the San Francisco kicker? No. Oh, no. That's no, not look, fair. That's, that was part of why the game was so incredible. This kid off the street with – he didn't even get the, the opportunity of a timeout. It was they got enough yardage. Jimmy G had to clock it, and he runs out there, and he kicks the tying field goal. That was insane. I, mean, I know we knuckleballed the next one, but I was referring to Jimmy Garoppolo, man, that – when he had chances to win the game, but he he managed to tie it. But every everything else, the overtime, he just looked he looked terrified. He looked like a scared bitty baby boy. I don't think he trusted the receivers. I mean, I don't know why you target Pettis on the final drive trying to come back. Yes, well, they all but they all had drops. But so. there were yeah there were drops across the board, and then yeah there was a confidence issue with his receivers not having the safety valve of Kittle hurt him. And it, some passes were just errant or thrown right to the defenders. No doubt about it. We should get into the news. New 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, Devonta Freeman could miss about two weeks in what is believed to be a foot sprain. Uh, our own Matthew Betts says that seems conservative. Three to four weeks is more likely. And if you factor I guess you would in, consider that optimistic. Wouldn't the conservative pick be like if they yes. had said three or four weeks and then he comes back in two? Yes, I think you are right uh, with your analysis on the analysis. Thank you. Um, but <laughs> That's all I'm here for. Freeman, <laughs> uh, Freeman has not been one over the last few years to recover well or quicker than expected from injury he's you know up there in running back age and so this is this is a concern uh he's dealt with uh, too many injuries over the last two years and I think you know especially we're going to talk about the running back waiver wires but you know it's not really a spoiler Brian Hill is going to be a major pickup right now I imagine Brian Hill is going to be the primary pickup for the majority of teams and if you're a you know, Chris Carson owner, you're looking for the bye week. There's Brian Hill with no Edo Smith, no Devonta Freeman. That's, that's said like a Chris Carson owner. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Austin Hooper has been diagnosed with an MCL uh, sprain. This was breaking news on yesterday's show. He's going to miss some time. Yeah, They're thinning out in Atlanta. And, they, and I do agree with what you said yesterday. I was disappointed in Calvin Ridley in this game Yes, this past week. It was a bad one. But he's sitting right there. There's a lot to be – and maybe maybe you look at Russell Gage, too, as a just sneaky Darius Slayton-esque type of play. Yeah, with how much they're going to throw the ball and with Matt Ryan in tow, you, you know, they're – and Hooper gone, yeah, there's going to be fantasy points to be had. What about Luke Stalker? But it's not going to go that direction. <laughs> Brandon Cooks has already been ruled out for week 11 against the Bears. Yeah, I mean, this is it's it's nice. We I think when we, when you saw him practicing in part, right, we were like, oh, okay, so he's trending. But remember, Sterling Shepard was practicing for a long time. This is a situation here for the health of Brandon Cooks's life. So he's going to be out. Robert Woods gets to face the Bears. We get to see if Cooper oh, Cup can get off the Schneid. Josh Reynolds, Chris Herndon's now out. <laughs> Thank goodness. We need an extended period of time. Like I want one of those graphics of Chris Herndon's season. November 10th, 2019 to November 10th, 2019. Yes. You should make that because that's <laughs> he's been on people's rosters through the you know, you pick him up after the suspension and then oh, it's the hamstring, then it's we're trending and now it's goodbye. I you know, I know one catch, I seven know yards people that week. have had him on the roster forever because they picked him up before the suspension was over. You had to get in early and then you roster him and then you okay, well he's going to be back next week and then can you st Oh my goodness. You this know. guy's been on There's never been someone held this long that has scored what one fantasy point. Yeah, AJ Green might be in that category too. <laughs> but you, well, you at least Herndon's heard got a point. You or someone you know has been affected yes. by AJ Green or Chris Herndon. Yes. That's for sure. All right. Rhett Ellison's in the concussion protocol, D Giants tight end. Will Fuller is returning to practice this week. That's interesting. It is. He's uh, intriguing, always a risk. And then Dwayne Haskins is going to start the rest of the season for the Redskins. Make He's had the bye week. And he'll have the opportunity to start for them. We'll see what happens uh, this week. And if he can continue to take advantage of the reps with the first team now. Yeah, I mean, this is bad news for Terry McLaurin. And I know that the more first team reps Dwayne Haskins gets and, uh, you know, obviously a very good matchup this week. But in general, when you go to a rookie who struggled versus a veteran that was competently throwing you the ball it's it's a downgrade for you know the f1 all it's right the f2 mike davis was claimed <laughs> off of waivers by the panthers that's uh, there you go well i mean that's just a like is who's actually the backup it means there isn't one there isn't a handcuff for christian but, mccaffrey but that's what that's what i'm talking about do you just move on from that situation yes yeah news and notes is always brought to you by the sleeper app Grab it. Don't miss the latest fantasy football news. Maybe some Emmanuel Sanders updates come through later this afternoon. Let's get into the waivers. Put me in, coach. 
All right, returning from the bye, we're off of the bye apocalypse. The Broncos, Texans, Jags, Patriots, Eagles, Redskins, they get to play football again. This week, the Packers, Giants, Seahawks, Titans. So you've got your Derrick Henrys, your Chris Carsons, your Saquons, and, and your Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. So a lot of running backs. That's what I'm saying. I think Brian Hill's the guy this sure. week. And the real question is, is do you as a fantasy owner become – Worried about the limited timeline with Brian Hill. That can define what you spend on fab is if you buy into two weeks, what do you spend on two weeks? If you buy into three, four weeks, we're heading into the playoffs. So he could get you there. He could help you get there if you need a running back. Uh, if you end the season with a bunch of fab money, it doesn't roll over. You know what I mean? So this is the time of year where now I like to make sure I still have money going into the playoffs. We, we say that as a tip early in the, uh, in the beginning of the season. I'm always going to at least – so right now, I, I want to say $5 is what I make sure I have going into the playoffs. My own league of record team, I got $1. I got a dollar left, but I can't be at zero because there's going to be those important matchups when there's one opponent in the entire league in your championship and you want to steal a dollar away. But outside of that, you know, th these are the weeks where you need a win. You, you need to make sure your opponents lose. Spend whatever you've got to spend to make sure you're winning these waiver wires. And he gets Carolina this week, speaking of Brian Hill, Carolina, and then Tampa Bay next week, which the Tampa Bay matchup is unfortunate. Uh, the Carolina matchup is wonderful. Yes. Aaron Jones was the start of the week because of it. They've given up a top five performance three consecutive weeks. Go get it. Sure. Uh, do you have any – I mean, fantasy football is a game of opportunity, 100%, and the Falcons are a – generally strong offense but for Brian Hill I know there's the, the truthers are out there I don't know Jason if you consider yourself a Brian Hill truther or you're just like he's more of an Edo Smith falser no I well I, I would say I'm both and okay. because I because Edo Smith's not good at all um but sure but my point of saying this is we as the public look at Brian Hill and say well He's clearly better than Ito Smith. Why does Ito Smith keep passing him on the depth chart? Mm -hmm. And there's people, Brian Hill's better than Devonta Freeman. I mean, he was a fifth-round pick, and it's taken him multiple injuries to get to the forefront. So while he is the top pick, especially if you need a running back to play this week, I'm just tempering my expectations. This I, is not Kenyon Drake taking over an entire Cardinal backfield. Right. This is just opportunity. This is like give Brian Hill 15 carries and maybe five catches in an offense that doesn't have Hooper, that doesn't have Sanu, that doesn't have Freeman. Yeah, he had 20 carries this last week. Yeah, I so mean, the that, opportunity is there. Yeah, and he, and he just tell him someone go up to Brian Hill, whisper into his ear that this is preseason week three. That's all you need to do, <laughs> and he the pressure will fall off of him, and you'll be fine. Yeah, the, there isn't competition here. You know what I mean? There, there's now that. Devonte and Ito are gone. I mean, they, yeah, maybe uh, Kenyon Barner, Quadri Olson will will get a few carries, but you know, it's 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 Hill's game, and I have liked Hill, like not just from what we've seen in preseason. I liked his college tape in our dynasty league. You know, I I picked up Brian Hill early, thinking he was the backup to own. It turned out to be Ito Smith, but uh, no, not really. So we'll stay in running backs. Let me ask you this question. If these players were out there, which these are in the probably owned but worth checking category, I want to know Brian Hill or, okay? Okay. Brian Hill or Royce Freeman. Who would you rather roster if Royce Freeman was out there, Denver running back, splitting time with Lindsey? I'm on the Brian Hill side. Where are you guys at? Assuming I'm playing either one of these guys this week, it would be Brian Hill. Okay. Yeah, if, if for only one week, Brian Hill, but otherwise it's Royce Freeman. Kareem Hunt, who's 72% owned, has Pittsburgh Thursday, then Miami, Pittsburgh again. Kareem Hunt. You'd rather have Kareem Hunt than Brian Hill? Yeah. I'm on the Brian Hill side. I am as well, although Kareem Hunt, nice debut. Ronald Jones? Oh, Ronald Jones. Okay, Ronald Jones. Uh, other options at the running back position, and I think by naming these players, you'll see why Brian Hill's at the top of my list. <laughs> but you're talking about, like, McKissick, depending on whether Ty Johnson's out, McKissick should get, like, 10 to 15 touches against Dallas. Any interest in J.D. McKissick? Yes, uh, because he'll get passing work. And it, But you're right. This is all on 
Ty Johnson, who he was concussed, is he going to make it back? We we won't have news on that until later on in the week. But for if you're not in on the Brian Hill sweepstakes, I'd throw a casual dollar to three dollars on J.D. McKissick and see if he just ends up on the back of your roster. Would you rather have J.D. McKissick in the passing work or Adrian Peterson off of bye against the Jets, but you're worried about uh, what, what is this Darius guy? Is Darius McKissick. Guys- I would play Peterson. See, yeah. I I'm I would play still... Peterson even if he's sharing some time with guys because he's been so good. Yeah, me, th- I, I'm I'm on that side. I think, but Peterson... a full PPR versus standard, maybe you flip the script. Sure. Are you the Are you Peterson in both situations? Um, I want to. I mean, the thing is, is you got to make your claims today, and I, I I wish there was more news coming out on what the expectation is for Darius Geis. I, I told Brooks before the show one of these uh, things to not forget. I want to remember for next year is to not call the shot on a guy coming back. Well, that, that would be like saying Darius Geis is just going to come back and, and be the guy. I, I think he's got to prove it before you take it away from Adrian Peterson. Now, does the fact that they are – they they have – Washington is fully committed to next year. Because it's Dwayne Haskins. Their, better, their best chance to win is to play Case Keenum. But they have gone to Dwayne Haskins. He's the starter for the rest of the season. They're in evaluation mode. Does that factor in at all? They need to evaluate Darius Geis and see if they have a running back. Yeah, I think there's it's a diff calling your shot on Geis, I wouldn't play Geis, but he will hurt Peterson, if that makes sense. Like him getting playing time will hurt Peterson. But the matchups, this is a big decision. They play the Jets, then the Lions, then the Panthers. Those Ooh. are three if Geis was yeah, gone right nice. now, I'd be telling people Oh, yes. Adrian Peterson's a must play for three straight weeks. And also keep in mind, you know, Guys, what guys came back? Did he have ten ten carries? Did, is this the first game back for guys? Or yes, he, this, will, the, this will be this the, the first, first game, game back. back for guys. He he is activated through the bye. This will be his first opportunity to come back. Okay, he played in week one. That's he, what I was. He had ten carries for and, eighteen, and Adrian Peterson was inactive in that. Game. Totally different head coach now too. Yes, I mean you you just have a lot of trust in what Peterson's done recently. It's going to be a very tough decision. I would still play Peterson over somebody like McKissick. Um, and what helps Haskins more? Having a Hall of Fame great back that that you know is, you know, the, the defense. They're, they're going to win this week. I just I just want to put that out there. Washington's going to beat the Jets this week. But that's what I believe. And it'll be on the back of Peterson, Geis. I think McLaurin ends up okay. But uh, Peterson's certainly been playing very, very well. We'll pause for a split second right there because – uh, I need a break before I say Kalen Balaj's name, and you got to compose yourself. Yeah, so we'll talk about HelloFresh. We'll thank them for sponsoring our independent podcast, keeping this thing going. We're talking about America's number one meal kit, one that all three of us have extensive experience with, and they have very easy seasonal recipes. Deliver them right to your door. All you got to do is cook and enjoy. We all love this. They've got things like. Uh, everything from family recipes to calorie smart recipes, vegetarian, or my personal favorite, the craft uh, burgers oh. from HelloFresh. They're incredible, and they make cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. They don't make these things complex, and you're not spending the entire evening. Everything is from basically the package to the table in 30 minutes or less. They're flexible. They fit your lifestyle. And you can add extra meals. Maybe you need to get a few extra this week or pause it for a little while. And uh, I absolutely love it. Get nine free meals with HelloFresh by going to HelloFresh.com slash footballers9. Okay, so that's the nine free meals. Use that code. That's HelloFresh.com slash footballers9 and use the code footballers9. And we also want to thank Away, who is an awesome company making uh, the best travel luggage imaginable and it, it, look away knows that everyone has a different style and that's why they have uh, they have their carry-ons in two different sizes two different materials I've, i love my away bag all three of us have an away carry-on bag that when we're different ro- colors yes yeah. i got the light blue i got the white one yeah and I'm, when i'm gray yeah like, <laughs> like an ash when we're rolling down on those four-way rollers, oh, we looking hot. We're looking so good at the airports. Look, and not to mention that they're they're designed to last a lifetime. Their standout customer service will get it fixed, replaced 
ASAP if anything ever breaks. And they have a 100-day free trial on everything Away makes. That's incredible. That's 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 confidence in their product. You want to see it yourself, you can shop everything at their stores in New York, Austin, L.A., San Francisco, Boston, Chicago. How about London? Oh. If you're listening across the pond. <laughs> Look, we love them. They're <laughs> awesome. You've got to check them out. They are the best suitcases. They'll last you a lifetime. For $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash fantasy and use promo code fantasy. That's awaytravel.com slash fantasy. Use the promo code fantasy for $20 off a suitcase because getting away means getting more out of every trip to come. All right. Kalen Belange had 20 carries last week for 43 yards. He had four catches for two yards. But volume still matters. And Mike was facing him in a couple leagues, and it was like eye roll time. Every time yes. he would get a touch, he's he's potentially out there. They have Buffalo. I'm, you could do worse. Yeah, I'm actually okay with Kalen Belange. Like, when you're playing him, you're just hoping that he can hit a straight line home run. And he can. And he 100% can. And against Buffalo, if you're giving Kalen Balaj 20 carries or so, then I think he has a solid chance of ripping one off. I, I know we search for analogies from time to time on the show, and sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. But Balaj feels – I feel like Balaj is out there on the field because he passed some tests in the locker room about the playbook. Like, it's not about how well he plays on the field. It's like, you know what we're doing, so we're cool with you out there. Because otherwise, you'd be trying out, uh, as you say, the Dragon Laird or <laughs> Miles Gaskin, yeah. or you'd be shooting your shot on some other players to evaluate, and it's like, eh, he knows it. I don't want to teach anybody else. Raheem Mostert is actually sneaky. Raheem Mostert, yeah. Matt Breed left with an ankle injury once again. I, If they have any intelligence about them, they will give him the week off. They play Arizona, they're at home, and Tevin Coleman limped off the field, and Mostert, even with Tevin Coleman, without Matt Burita, would be a good pickup for me. So if you're looking at a pivot outside of the top, maybe you don't got a lot of fab to spend, to me, Mostert is sneaky. Yeah, I mean, Mostert is sneaky, but only if Burita is out. Because, and I don't expect that to be the case. I know it's a short week coming off of the Monday Night Football, and we'll have to pay attention. We won't know that by the time waivers go through, whether or not he's out. But this is pretty much what he does every week. He's injured. He he misses uh, some practice time, gets out there on the field, gets injured, <laughs> limps off. And, you know, in this game, to have Coleman hurt and Burita hurt, and then you get, you know, 28 rushing yards. He looked good. Mostert always he looks always good. He always looks good. I don't, you know, but so does Burita. So does Coleman. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I've got to have one of these running backs out for me to actually start Moster. I think that's good analysis and a good plan. And if you need to take a, you could take a shot for zero fab, couple bucks, and put him on your lineup, and then see what happens the rest of the I, week. I threw him on my lineup uh, before the Monday night game because I had an open rush spot, and I just figured, well, Moster gets hurt every game. But you mean burrito? Yeah, uh, yes, I did. Yes. Uh, anybody else we want to talk about at the running back position? Keep an eye on Wayne Gallman. Wayne Gallman is the only one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Barkley, we don't have any real updates, I assume. Uh, it's, uh, he's feeling coach, much better. Pat I'm Shermer feeling said, better. said he's feeling better. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> Quote, he's fine. So I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think Saquon's going to be missing. His pride may be impacted by the uh, 13 yeah. for one. It's got to feel bad. Once again, Foot Clan, get your handcuffs, get your uh, Alexander Madison, Tony Pollard, uh, Gus Edwards, Rashad Penny even. Oh, gosh. I know, but if, you, if, if you're the Chris went, Carson owner. If Carson owner, went down, yes, yes. Reichwell Armstead, that, that, that's a name. Like, he that's is a cute, yeah. owned in, 90, in, in 1% of leagues. He's out there. I mean – if if Leonard Fournette were to You might want to say his team. Yeah, I was going to say Leonard because, Fournette were to go down, Reichwell Armstead, rookie running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, is a plug and play top 20 running back. One one more name just real quick. He probably owned, yes, I get it. He's not available in your league. But just to have a peek cuz we're talking about guys who might be available. The Bipocalypse was a, a a tidal wave against a lot of teams and a lot of teams had to make a tough decision. Duke Johnson from the Houston Texans might be on your waiver wire. And this dude, five targets in three straight games. Like he, They are involving him more and more, and he's he is a playable running back. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead and turn to wide receivers. Some waiver wire options, pickups, opportunistic plays. You're not going to chase. Well, we'll see. Let's see. D.D. Westbrook, let's bring him up. Devontae Parker. And then let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers situation. Let's start with D.D. D.D. is coming into a situation now with Nick Foles. But in my opinion, you're having to presume a lot here. You are. And I, that concerns me because I don't want to just – I don't want to project anything from the preseason on to week 11 simply because Foles, D.D. look nice in the preseason. Here's the truth. We've not seen it in the regular season yet. So while I am fine taking a flyer on D.D. personally, D.J. Chark wasn't D.J. Chark exactly. in week one of the NFL season. And Fournette's playing well. So and Didi's coming off injury. Didi so that's should, there's a lot of flags for me. Yeah, I think Didi should be rostered. He, you know, he's a guy that could very well break out and be good. But I'm not going to start him this week unless it's a, a situation where you have to. And I think that this that there isn't that situation because if you're telling me I have to start, you know, a a, a Didi Westbrook or a Randall Cobb, then I'm going to start the guy who's just been playing well, getting targets. You know, I would rather start Randall Cobb this week. But if I don't have to, you know, really Ross, if I don't have to start either guy, then Didi is the type of player where he could really be something special. But you got to wait and see with Foles in tow. Mike is nodding, but I wanted to give him the chance with his sweetie to I, chime in. Do you pretty much agree with that? I, yeah, assessment? I, com I completely agree. I think that you have to pick him up, but I would try not to play him. And it. He was getting far more involved. It was disappointing at the beginning with Gardner, but then, I mean, before the injury happened, a game of 11 targets, eight targets, nine targets. He was he was starting to get in the groove with Minshew. Let's see how it can happen with Foles, though. Yeah, I mean, you basically, Jason brought it up, wanting to remember, give a guy a chance to reestablish. Didi's going to need a chance to reestablish. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm all over Debo Samuel. He's I, he's my top, actually, like, waiver wire pick up because Devontae Parker yeah you can pick him on playing where he's just here every single week you have waiver wire fatigue with him and him and Didi are owned in slightly more than 50 percent of leagues so there's a chance they're not there but Debo is more than likely on your waiver wire and he gets a massive massive upgrade if Sanders misses if Sanders misses as well just so you guys know where the depth chart is in San Francisco Kendrick Bourne came yeah. in and stepped in not Dante Pettis. Pettis is running as the wide receiver five right now. Didn't see a snap before Sanders left the field. Well, when we Kendrick Bourne scored and will be on the field. Yeah, I was going to say when we kicked Pettis off the pirate ship, I I threw him a rope so he could come back, but he dropped it. Oh <laughs> so, man! I thought you were going. <laughs> so. I thought you were going to bring up. And two weeks ago, Jimmy Garoppolo had his best game as a professional quarterback, throwing four touchdowns against the Arizona Cardinals who Jimmy Garoppolo will be playing again this week. So Kendrick Bourne is in play if people are hurt. Yeah, that's a sneaky one. Devontae Parker, he gets Buffalo. He was okay last week, 5 for 69. Nothing special, but nothing that destroyed you. Buffalo's a tough matchup. Tredavious yeah, White no, is... He is so freaking good. Yeah, and he dropped another interception in this game. I, but he was, there, he was there to drop it, yes. which is a step one. <laughs> Uh, Darius Slayton had the monster week, 10 for 121 and two on 14 targets, but has the bye week. Yeah. And, and then, then Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. That's so we do. We just like that stinks. Do I we mean, just hang up a picture, say thank you. And just we're moving on. Yeah. I, Probably. I, 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 Would I you don't, let me ask you that. Would you drop him for Randall Cobb or Debo or Didi? Obviously, if you need a start, then you would drop him because he's on a bye. And I don't think I would rather roster the long-term prospects of Darius Slayton, meaning three weeks from now, of, over players that you know could be relevant. You'd in rather the stash meantime. him over Cobb? No. I would. I would hold Slayton over Cobb. I, I'm saying if you need a start, obviously not. As far as who has more upside long-term, yeah, it would be it would be Slayton. Um, but you've got to wait a couple weeks. Not everybody has that luxury. If I'm waiting, and obviously he's mostly taken, but I, I still think, and I've, I've said this, but Parker, after this week, the schedule opens up is awesome and is going to be a great fantasy wide receiver the rest of the season. Cleveland, Philly, Jets, Giants, Cincinnati. They're You're not up. wrong. You're not wrong. I'll bring up some other names. You tell me how interested you are. 
I feel like a bunch of these names are really in the wild card category. Wild card! You know, Zach Pascal, just two for 26 last week. Seven targets. But if Jacoby Brissett is back, then if Brissett is back and Hilton is still out, then, yeah, Pascal can be a wide receiver three. Yeah, and then uh, and I I do need to change that. So look, I, I, really li- I really like that. It's like if this is that and this is that, then he can be mediocre. <laughs> that is <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, James Washington had his first nice game. I'm, I'm not chasing not it. Not chasing it. Yeah. Demarius Thomas actually led the Jets in receiving. They have Washington. He had nine targets. It and then seems- Oakland, and then the Bengals. And the- like, and then the Dolphins. I mean, maybe this I, is. His. I would. I would actually look at Demarius because it's been multiple games. Thirty-nine targets since week five. You're blinded. We're don't get blinded by Robbie. Robbie's just out there. He, he's just running around. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's just <laughs> running around the field. DT has lost the step. He doesn't look fantastic. But this is the third game where he has nine targets or more. So he is. In a plus matchup here, he's definitely someone you could pick up and play as much as you could pick up and play a Randall Cobb. If if I'm choosing between those two guys, I feel like DT's targets are a little bit further down the field. I, I think I'd rather have Demarius over, would you, over Cobb, I would agree. W- is it worth the situation of, okay, you get to brag that you won with Demarius Thomas on your roster, or, pretty nice. or you get to cry because you lost because you started a jet named Demarius Thomas, mm. which is better, which is worse. I'm going to take the better being the win and the worse being the loss. That's that's the way that well, I, is, But is the pain which, more severe than the the bragging? That's what I, I think was, the bragging is better. Are you interested in Andy Isabella? <laughs> Not really. I, I, you three know, for 78 on three targets. It's wonderful to see him get involved. But the problem is, you know, and, and a lot of people are going to want to go after him after two big games in a row. The problem is, He's got San Francisco in San Francisco, and yes, that was one of his big games, but that was one, one play. Yeah. Um, but if you want a one-play shot, if you want a guy that you, sh- I think, should roster one and touch. play, yes, the one-touch man <laughs> himself, that's exactly Well, it was Tyreek, but now it's This is else. like a Steph Curry half-court shot Yeah. every game. McCole Hardman is awesome. He's so stinking fast. Kansas City quarterbacks have a 154.1 quarterback rating when targeting Hardman, which one fifty eight point three is perfect. That's such a dumb stat. <laughs> that's so it. stupid. Because he doesn't he got one target. I mean, that's the stat that matters. You either hit or you goose. But it the thing is, is, is sorry, it, it's really bizarre that I mean he was a focal point of this offense. He was playing on a huge amount of snaps week one, seventy eight percent of the snaps Week two, 73, and then he was sitting in the 60s, and now he can't even get on the field. Well, a lot of that, I mean, when was Tyreek Hill gone? It was week one, but it still so, is It's very yeah, strange. Right right now, I mean, you look at his uh, snap percentages the last three games, Tyreek Hill's back 15%, 19%, 22%. That's, that's garbage. That's not what I want for fantasy. But over those games, you still have good fantasy outputs because – Amazingly, he's he he can get a touchdown on on any play because he's faster than people. So he's one of these guys where okay, there's at least upside. I know that it's risky. I mean, two of his games this year have been negative, but he has upside, and then he has that built in. You know, we talked about Dallas Goddard at tight end. He always has the same upside as all these you know garbage tight ends, but he has the built in handcuff of should Tyreek go down, which we, we had a scare he this last did. week. Then all of a sudden, Hardman becomes a uh, you know a great pickup, and you already have him. Yeah, he's attached to Patrick Mahomes. You can always take your shot and end up like this past so, week. So to compare him to Demarius Thomas, who's going to clearly get more targets, be more involved, and have a much higher floor. Would you you know if both those guys are out there and you need to start this week, Thomas, you'd pick up and play Thomas. Yeah, I mean it's just a matter of uh, most situations. It would be Thomas for me if I was needing Mondo upside, maybe I'd take the shot, but one target does not get me excited. No, I get it. Uh, you were you were bemoaning starting McCall Hardman in one of our leagues all game long. Then one play, yes. one play, he's awesome. <laughs> no, he's, he's, all he's awesome. He's the drag racer. All right, tight ends. Look at Gerald Everett this week. 
They have Chicago, 8 for 68 last week, 12 targets, no Brandon Cooks, and Chicago on the outside receivers. I'd be excited about some tight end opportunities against them. Gerald Everett, to me, probably owned, but worth looking at, along with Greg Olson. Eric Ebron, Squeaky Wheel got 12 targets. Yeah. Too bad he caught five of them. Yeah. Well, uh, again, this is a s similar situation to Zach Pascal. The Brian Hoyer targets were not good well, targets. Well, the problem was he was the squeaky wheel, so he got the grease, but he fr he missed the part of he that. He put the grease you, on his hands? Where oh. you, you don't wash your hands afterwards. Dummy. Yeah. Right. They gave him the grease, and he's like, no, I'm leaving it on. <laughs> this, they, this is the stuff? This is how I get the ball? It, it felt, All right. Is this stick him? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Whoop. It felt like Brian Hoyer had like one of those old school Bluetooth headsets in, and the coach would be like, Throw to Ebron because he looked like he forced him the ball all game long. Dare, I, I would maybe, still stay with him. Maybe that was the chance. And then at the end of the Reich's like, see, this is why we're not throwing you the ball, dummy. Oh, it's on purpose? Yeah. That loss is on you, Eric. Sent him a bunch of gifts <laughs> of the drops. <laughs> all right, main waiver wire pickups, though, guys that are uh, far less owned. You're talking about Jack Doyle, who's three for 44 and one on four targets. Uh, okay, he ran 21 pass routes. Ebron run 33. When when we knew that they were missing Paris Campbell and T.Y. Hilton, to me, the tight ends were where the ball was going to go. It wasn't going to be – I don't think Pascal's got the opportunity to take over a ball game. I don't think Chester Rogers is your savior. So if both those guys are out, I'm still interested in Doyle and Ebron myself. I agree. I'm, in, I'm interested in them. I – I'm not chasing O.J. Howard. No, I'm not either. I, he, he was my start of the week. That was based on Arizona. The defense, as Bruce Arians would say, the defense dictated that the ball would go to O.J. Howard, and now I am out. The Saints, their matchup this week is a top 10 fantasy defense against tight ends. Yeah, you you, you could say goodbye. If you're really playing someone, if, like, if you're picking someone up and you're playing them, I hate the matchup, but it's the against the Patriots. But Dallas Goddard is still interesting. I agree with you. What is what is the, what are the Patriots known for doing? I mean, th they've done it the entire Bill Winning. Belichick era. Okay, they're making known for, you sad when you start people against they're, them. They're make they're known for several things, but primarily the one I was searching for here was they Shutting always the take away your number one option. They you have to get beaten. You have to beat the Patriots with your number two or your number three option. And if they look at shutting Zach Ertz down, Goddard could be the beneficiary here. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, maybe he doesn't have uh, as good a game as Luke Stalker. Maybe. But he very well might. But there's no upside to rostering someone like that. So I don't know if there's a lot of upside to, to Goddard I'm against saying, New England. Uh, no, I'm saying the upside is a Zach Ertz injury says that Goddard becomes an absolute top tight end rest of the way versus – I'd rather just play Darren Fells this week. I'm I'm fine with that. I'm fine playing Darren Fells every week. He's tied with Austin Hooper most tu most touchdowns, and he's probably out there because of the uh, the bye week. Yeah, he's available <laughs> in the majority of leagues. One for one and one. The last time he played that <laughs> that's very McCall Hardman. So are, I was looking. Are you going back to Gesicki, Mike? We, I mean, it, he was on the field. He was running routes. He had a couple seam targets. It's not like Preston Williams is coming back this week. Oh, and man. and the matchups okay, if Buffalo. Uh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> okay, well I don't want to. The problem I have is I don't want to get into main waiver wire pickups for tight ends, and then we just rotate five sure shot names and forget the shot names from the week before because the Jason said it before the nature of tight ends is inconsistency. So if we throw away everybody when the week they're inconsistent. It you was, never get them to return to their mean. It was still six targets. I mean, Gesicki it, or Noah Fant? Gesicki. Noah Fant. I I think Noah Fant has he, – he's been on the field getting the targets enough. He had his – finally had his breakout game. I realize, you know, most of that was, you know, I'll a play. gigantic uh, play. But, uh, you know. He does it, play more than Gesicki. Yeah, and, and, and Minnesota, while they've been, you know – always seen as this great defense they're very middle of the pack right now and, and specifically against tight end they're 16th so they're dead middle and you know that that's that's what dead middle dead middle is that that's acceptable I, i'll allow it's that. definitely new yeah that's fine 
Yeah, um, they're dead middle. They are dead tops. But I think dead tops. I don't want to bury like the most important factor here that I'm looking at when I'm taking a shot is I want opportunity, right? You don't want to rely on one single play. You don't want to be Kyle Rudolph where if, if Well, that he, kind if, of is what Darren Fells is. Darren Fells has scored a lot, but he's yeah. he's been involved. He's been involved in the offense. I mean, I think anybody watching Houston has looked at them and said, you know, this is a piece of what he's using to move the ball down the field. But, you know, Gerald Everett, near the top of the league in targets. Yeah, Gerald Everett would be the guy I'd pick up. I, the Hawkinson is, is near the top of the, the league in tight end targets. Everett would be the guy I would want the most. He's just probably owned. I, I do think, and I know the matchup isn't great against New England, but I, I, I say Dallas Goddard would be my number two because, like you said, you want a guy that's involved. He's averaging over the last four weeks five and a half targets a game, which for tight ends is that's pretty nice, pretty good. Jared Cook last week comes back six for seventy four, gets Tampa. Are you looking Jared Cook's way? I'm yes, yeah, I'm interested if in he's that. available. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested. I'm pretty intrigued. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to quarterback streamers. Full stream ahead. I feel like talking about tight ends was like super not helpful. I feel like that was we were we were at the like um like they put all the food from the grocery store that's expired out and you go walk through it and then you're like, I'm gonna take a few of these things home and you just kinda hope they hope they're still good. Yeah, I mean here's here's the summation, right? If if you've got uh Eric Ebron or Gerald Everett out there on your waivers, grab them first. If not Go for a touchdown upside with Fells or targets with someone like uh, Jack Doyle, uh, or Dallas Goddard. Goddard, or Jared Cook above those guys. All right, streaming quarterback options. I really like both of yours more than I do mine. So you start. Great. <laughs> okay. And it's uh, I'll go Jimmy Garoppolo. He's at home. He could have limitations in the running game, and he's facing the 32nd ranked pass defense, which is Arizona which he just torched two weeks ago for his greatest fantasy performance. Am I excited about the, you know, hopefully he has Kittle back. The, I hopefully think, he has Sanders back. But either way, I can't see him walking away from that game without two passing touchdowns. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to play Arizona and not throw touchdowns. It's, it's just like, part of what they do. It's really been difficult for that uh, any quarterback to be able to uh, throw for less than two touchdowns. Um so I like that. I expect Emmanuel Sanders back. I, I don't know about Kittle yet. To, a little too early to tell, but I, I like Jimmy G. Um, for me, look, Derek Carr is a great yeah. play. He's been playing very well this year. He's had his ups and downs for fantasy because he doesn't always have the great weapons. He is a streaming guy where when you've got the right matchup, he's performed well. Well, guess what? You got the right matchup. Cincinnati, the, the Raiders have the highest the team total implied points from Vegas this week. They're the team expected to score the most. Obviously, everything starts at the quarterback, and Cincinnati's given up the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks over the last month. The, the most yards per play, Cincinnati gets no pressure on the quarterback, which is perfect for what Derek Carr likes to do when he can stand in the pocket, survey the field, get it to the Walrus, get it to Tyrell Williams. Uh, Derek Carr's a, a very good play. All right, I'm jumping in here. I'm taking Kyle Allen. I'm taking Kyle Allen against the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not buying into... <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I figured that was Kyle Stallion. <laughs> no? no? Not this week? No, on the stream? <laughs> I'm not recycling the nickname. Come on! I mean, it's an excellent... It's an excellent drop. <laughs> <laughs> But now I thought you'd put the pieces together faster. But okay? here's, here's the thing. If you're watching on the YouTube, you're going you're to see I'm going with Kyle Allen and then Josh Allen's going to jump onto the screen. That's true. That's very funny. confusing. I'm sorry. I'm not buying into it. Brooks, what... can you CGI that? <laughs> Just put Kyle Allen's face, please. I'm not buying into what happened with the Falcons against the Saints as something that's going to continue to happen. That was off the bye. Uh, it's in Carolina. The, the The Falcons have given up six QB one performances. They bleed fantasy points. I I like a bounce back for Kyle Allen here. No Super Bowl run for Atlanta. Oh uh, no, <laughs> no. Okay, twenty thirty two. Yep. We're moving on. 
Defense versus Offense. Presented by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. All right, defensive streaming options. I'm actually going to go with, and again, your league's probably, uh, depending on how competitive it is, this, they're starting to pile on some defenses to benches. So streaming, streaming is, is very difficult streaming your defense right now because they're very highly owned. Yeah, and I don't love a lot of the streaming options this week. So I'm going to go with Jacksonville. They're coming off the bye week. They're facing Indianapolis. You're either going to have Jacoby Brissett returning from injury or Brian Hoyer doing Brian Hoyer things. And Jacksonville heading into the bye. Actually, surprisingly, once again, Jason, let's validate your losing Jalen Ramsey playing well on defense, losing your best player playing well the next week. They sacked Darnold eight times. They dominated Cincinnati. They held Houston to 26 points, which I consider to be a pretty good showing uh, against Deshaun Watson. So I'll take Jacksonville against Indy. I think it's a play that is very safe. I don't think you're going to get blown blown out by Indianapolis. Uh, so I am going to throw two names out there, one that I think is just a smash play this week. And the other one better not be my my team. Let, let, let me see. It is not. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw mine and Mike's out there for you. No, look, Oakland, all the rationale I gave for playing their car is, is the same rationale for playing all of your Raiders. Play them, including the defense, because – I present you Ryan Finley. Ryan. Bal I present you <laughs> Ryan. F Baltimore the court just there. Two DST scores. Am I remembering that correct? You are remembering it correct. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. It was. It was really nice. Ryan Finley has been offered up as sacrifice to the <laughs> Raiders, and it, it, Oakland plays great at home. This is. We well, yeah, Tyler Boyd might even be. You know, we don't right. know his status. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Finley. Who do you think he completes the ball to more? I thought you were going to say, the, who do the, you think the, you are? The bang <laughs> who, <laughs> who do you think, think you are? The Bengals or the Raiders? You know what I mean? Like, right. this it's a, is... It's a defense that's getting better right now. Oakland's playing pretty well. Yeah, they were playing well. The, the other name I want to throw out, and the reason I want to throw it out is because we've been talking so about... So I have two chances to be right. No, it's <laughs> it's because we've been talking about the, the, the wires are slim pickings right now, and you need to be looking two weeks out. So it's almost like every right now we should be saying, here's our defense that we pick up a play this week, but here's a defense to pick up in preparation of the next week, and that's the Browns, who you can play this week. The Browns against uh, Pittsburgh, uh, this, you sure. know, that's not a scary matchup, but next week they've got Miami. So I think the Browns are a fine defense for a couple of weeks, and then the week after that they're, they're back to Pittsburgh. The week after that, the Bengals. The week after that, the Cardinals. So – the Browns are one of those stretch run defenses as they get a little healthier. All right. I am doubling up as you did, Jay. I mean, you, you went Derek Carr and Oakland. Mm -hmm. I am going Kyle Allen, and I will take his defense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> excellent. I was now, so hoping you did that. <laughs> it's something you would have done if you were sitting here. I will take the Josh Allen-led defense, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah. But Carolina against Atlanta. Like, Actually, I did that. I took the Josh Allen-led defense, Jacksonville. Oh, very nice. Oh. That would have worked, right? Yeah, yeah. it would have. Uh, five times they've given up a top 12 defense. Speaking to the, to the Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan has taken sacks. Matt, Matt Ryan has thrown interceptions. So It's interesting you because, can stream them. because you are uh, just speaking. You're, not, you're basically throwing last week out with Atlanta's big performance. Yes, I am. Because if you didn't, you know, you'd be worried about – them continuing that against Carolina. Divisional match. Seems uh, a little scary, but I, I get it. All right, this segment, as always, brought to you by Head & Shoulders in Walmart. Head & Shoulders, offense for great hair, defense against flakes. Visit Head & Shoulders, walmartsweeps.com for your chance to win tickets to the Super Bowl. This would be Super Bowl 54. Oh, man, next, next year, year, baby. Oh, <laughs> get ready for the <laughs> All right, hey, I've got a bonus waiver wire discussion before we close this thing out. Sweet. We didn't bring him up. Bonus. Tyler Lockett's banged up. Talk to me about Josh oh. Gordon, guys. Talk to me uh, about Josh Gordon. He was out there. He saw some snaps. His first chance to get in there. Made big, a couple of big catches. I was going to say, big plays. The times they needed a, a big play the most, they went to him. He stepped up. He caught both of the passes, 14-yard reception, 13-yard reception. He looked good. He's going to get more involved. He's a guy that you can pick up on waivers, but he's on bye. So, you know, he's probably 
in two weeks, still going to be the third option yeah. and, for the Seahawks. And fair buddy. point, fair point. And it felt like it was like Malik Turner. He was the one who was getting the play when Lockett went out. Yeah, I don't think Gordon is, you know, has been there enough to be, you know. Well, they were both that on the field, on all those plays. It wasn't like Turner did step in because they needed to add somebody, but it was Gordon, Metcalf, Turner on their three wide sets. So I was just curious. I figured people sure. wanted to hear about Gordon because – you're onboarding. You talked about Hollister having a great piece of a great offense. Gordon could quickly ascend to relevance, especially if Lockett's out long term, which is why it's worth thinking about. Sure. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction, our studio sponsor today, a Debo Samuel signed jersey. Yesterday, $64.94. Chance to get in on Debo early. Hundreds of daily auctions, all the NFL teams, the players you love, great gift ideas, Pristine auction.com use the registration code ballers that'll do it for us today we'll be back tomorrow good luck on your waivers good luck heading into week 11 we will see you tomorrow foot clan goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.